Going? Yes. Oh, okay. Hi guys, Redneck Computer Geek here. We've got the Ice Racer for RCG Racing here. We're going to try and go over a few questions you guys have posted up, along with answer a few things, and talk about what it is we're going to try to do for the last race of the season. We got one more race, hopefully, for the end of the year in about a week or so at the beginning of March. We're going to try to make it to that, depending on how the weather goes. It's not looking so good, but if we get one more freeze, we might make it. So a lot of you pointed out the GoPro mounted on the helmet. And unfortunately, due to technical difficulties with the GoPro, I didn't have anything from the first race. And to be quite honest, it would have been boring footage anyway, because this thing only did 16 miles per hour. And all of the other racers basically do 25 miles an hour to about 35. That's another technicality I wanted to talk with you guys about. What I ended up discovering was that when I did the pulley swap on this, a lot of you got back to me that I must have done something wrong. I did a 10 inch on the front and I had a six inch on the rear. And by all mud mower standards in the community, I should have been doing 20 to 25 miles per hour. The reason that didn't work, I'll include a clip here about what I found when I popped open that transmission. Now, when I built the ice racing John Deere, the idea was to be fast about 25 miles per hour. And what I ended up doing was I ended up doing a 10 inch drive pulley. And I left the rear pulley as the stock size, which was a little bit bigger than this one. And for most transmission setups that I've built over the years, it should have done about a little bit past 20 miles per hour. A 2 to 1 gear ratio on most transaxles will usually get you around 21 to 25, depending on tire size. Now, if you look at that, and you look at this, a quick drive-by, they look almost identical, but there is a major difference. So, this is your reverse chain, and here's your reverse chain here. Now, if we look sideways at this, this is the older style spicer, and this is the newer style spicer. So, this reverse gear is set up way slower than this reverse gear, because this side of the equation is what decides how fast it goes. The bigger that is, the faster that it goes. So if we come over here to this side, remember, this is the old style spicer. We can look at this gear and we can see it's about three inches across. So the bigger, the faster it goes. Let's come to this one and look at this gear. It's just barely about two and a half inches. So if we come back here and we look at this one, this fourth gear, is about two and a half inches. This transmission was set up to be slower for some reason for this particular John Deere setup. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the gear set out of this old spicer here. We're gonna cram it in there. We're gonna put everything back together and stuff it back in the John Deere. So where we're at right now is we've swapped over the best of both worlds over to here and the worst of both worlds over to this one. So this one has just a regular two shift key. This is a four shift key, which makes it stronger. We swapped over the gears so that that way we have the bigger gear ratio over here for top speed. We swapped over the reverse chain setup because the reverse chain on this one was in better condition and I don't feel like making one. And then the other oddball that we swapped was this is the original Spicer input gear. And as you can see, the backing on it is hollow. And these are notorious for breaking. What I discovered on the newer Spicer is that the backing is actually reinforced. There you go. And it's filled in. So I'm going to bet that that is stronger. 
also from here to the tip of the tooth on the newer one is thicker than here to the tip of the tooth on the old one. You can see the difference there. So, theoretically, we've got all of the good Let's Go Racing parts in here, and we've got the mishmash of leftover, not the best parts in here. All right, so, long story short, I had short gears in the transmission, I now have long gears in the transmission, and now this thing does about 23 miles per hour. footage of me racing against Dan who runs a red machine he was top racer the second race and he definitely without question is one of the fastest and the thing I'd like to point out here about ice racing is that Dan's machine actually has the smallest motor in the field Dan actually is running a 14 horsepower Vanguard and there are multiple machines including mine running 20 horsepower engines and running way faster. The thing about Dan's machine though is it was geared perfectly. So he just sat in fourth gear. He did about 25 miles an hour through the turns and he was able to do about 30 plus through the straightaway, which is what I need to gear this to do next. got a six inch pulley in the back we're gonna drop it down to a five if I drop it to a five I should clear into 30 miles an hour which should get me the speed I need on the straightaways so the other thing is I ended up making it in the newspaper and a lot of the reason why I'm pretty sure that I ended up with photos in the newspaper was the riding style that I chose to use and a lot of you pointed out the riding style, and a lot of you pointed out my really wonky pedal that I have over here. So let's show you the way that I was riding, and then let's talk about the wonky pedal. So if we have Jesse come over. So normally you would ride like this. And what I ended up doing was I ran like this, able to go and put my rear butt cheek right on this fender and able to use the seat as a backing. And when you're going around the corner, that pushes your weight down into it and essentially holds you right on. Which brings us around to this question. Everybody wanted to know why my gas pedal was in such a wonky location. 
And the reason being is because if I'm over here like this, I need to reach this gas pedal and I can't do it if I'm trying to go around this center console. So that's why the gas pedal is all the way over here. Another quick little thing I wanted to point out was that we were racing in 20 degree weather and I made a bad goof the first time. I went out racing without gloves. When you're going 20 miles an hour, your wind chill is 20 degrees. So if you are racing in 20 degree temperatures, it feels like zero degree. Um, my hands ended up locking up really bad, so I ended up using these cheap mechanics gloves, and they gave me really amazing grip on this steering wheel. And I highly recommend these. I'll make sure. The other thing that everybody asked me about, moving on to the next topic, is money. How much money do I have in the machine? The answer is I have roughly about $150 in the machine. But what I'll do is right about here, I'll tabulate everything that I have in it. And we'll discuss about what it is we need to invest for next year when we do this. Let's talk about tires, okay? So I cheated the system on the front tires. Next year, I need tires that have more of a curve to it. But what I did was I cheated the system and I overinflated these to almost 15 PSI. That's why they're rock hard. They're just totally almost no give. By putting 15 PSI into them, I managed to curve everything over on the front tires in order to be able to get grip. Um, this was because of recommendations I found from ATV racers that do this ice racing. And while we're right here, I want to point out these. These studs are exactly the way I did the studs in the video. The rear tires are done exactly the way I did in the first video. This worked out really, really well on the front. So I'll take a look at the rear. On the rear, I did them in a V pattern, just like the original video that I posted. What we're going to do for the last race, if it looks like the last race is going to happen, we're going to cut out all of the unstudded lugs. We're going to cut out every unstudded lug because the thing I ran into was that once the track got stirred up and there was a layer on the track, I couldn't get grip with the turf savers as good as I could before, and I started losing the rear end traction. So we're going to cut out every other lug and go from there. We have a helper. We have a helper. All right. So I got a lot of you asking about gas tank location because weight is a big issue. And weight is one of the things I need to address. So on this, the gas tank is in the rear of this. And gas weighs roughly about six pounds per gallon. So when I went to the first set of races, I had this entirely topped off with two and a half gallons worth of gas in it, which meant I had an extra 12 pounds back here. By the time I finished my second day of racing, I forgot to top off this gas tank. And so I was down the extra 12 pounds and it was noticeable in the rear when this thing came around a corner. The other thing that I don't have on this is I don't have a battery. And that's because I built it based on the idea of trying to stay light. And as my buddy Dan said while he was talking about his rig, he's got an extra 60 pounds on me and it is noticeable in his traction when he goes around a corner. So what I think we're gonna do to upgrade this is we're gonna put the battery right here on the back. Um, the battery weighs about 20 pounds or so, and so that extra 20 pounds plus the weight of a full tank will give me about an extra 30 or so pounds in the back, and I think that's the difference we're going to need in order to get more traction, because once we spin these tires up more, we're going to need the traction in order to hold. Hi 
everyone. So Jesse and I are going to do the best we can to throw it together in order to be able to get one more race out of it. We, uh, we've ended up blowing up an idler pulley every single race. Luckily, I managed to go and get some in the mail the other day. So we're going to throw it together, try and figure out why it keeps blowing up idlers, and get one more race. Thank you very much for supporting the channel. And do me a favor and tell Jessie that you appreciate the camera work, because if it wasn't for her, you wouldn't see half the spin-outs you do in most of the videos. She sits down by herself over on the corner just for you guys. So give her a like, give her some love. Say thank you, Jessie. Have fun, guys.